Yep, it's back. All right, guys, we are back with the Axial Capra, and of course, it's got rear steer. This time, it is bigger and badder than it ever was. Originally, I had a Capra on 2.2 inch tires, but they were the Pitbull tires, and they were a 5.19 or something like that. Now, I've got this on Proline Super Swampers, but they are not the XLs, so these are 5.4, I believe. So still very large 2.2s compared to most 1.9 stuff. Makes the truck look really big. However, I did a really aggressive wheelbase stretch on here as well. So trying to work our rear end around. So I stretched the wheelbase to 13.5 inches to kind of make this thing look appropriate for these tires. Just trying to get this finessed through here. The trail we're gonna go run today is the Mousetrap Trail. Mousetrap is one of my original trails that I actually broke open for the first time with a Capra, so I think it is fitting to send a Capra up it. Now this is the new modified entrance to Mousetrap. And apparently it doesn't wanna go up it right now, but for time's sake, we're just gonna throw it on up. All right, here we go. So let me just explain real quick why I have a capper again and kind of what happened on the channel. So a couple months back, I had a capper on 2.2 inch tires, rear wheel steer, tons of fun, crushed a lot of lines with it, but uh, kind of got completely used to the performance of the rig and just got a little bored of the capper itself. Wanted to decide, and I decided to try and build something special and different out of an element gatekeeper. So I bought an element gatekeeper kit and then I put Capra axles on about a week after I got it, after selling my Capra that I had. The Gatekeeper was a ton of fun with the Capra axles. It was also rear steered, but it had a C-channel chassis and a big heavy cage on top. So the performance was never quite the same. However, I had a lot of fun with it anyway. Now, I accidentally let it fall off a 40-foot cliff, the Element Gatekeeper with the Capra axles. It destroyed the capper axles, it destroyed the element gatekeeper cage, and it bent the chassis. After repairing it the first time, which cost me well over $150 just to repair one fall, um, I took it back out with a couple of friends and ended up going off another 40-foot cliff, this time hitting even harder, bending the chassis even worse, and breaking plastic parts again, including ripping the transmission right out of the skid, which destroyed the transmission too. So. I was sitting there with a bent chassis again, with a broken cage again, and uh, had to replace a lot of parts on it to get it up and running again. When I had a Capra cage and transmission sitting on the shelf, the Capra axles were good after the second fall because the, uh, the blunt of the force actually went directly onto the roof of the old gatekeeper. So I decided to just go ahead and take the Capra axles off the gatekeeper and put it onto a new Capra cage. This is not my old car. That car's still out there. Uh, it's actually sold it to one of my buddies and it's still out there crushing the trails. This is a completely new car. And in doing so, I decided to go with a crazy wheelbase, longer links and change it up just a little bit. I did end up having to chop the rear cage for the rear servo to clear better. Give me some articulation because of the shock angle. So this is a totally new car. It's on big tires. It's a longer wheelbase and it's just a different machine than what my original one was. So that's kind of the story of where my old capper went, where the new one came from, and the gatekeeper. Now the gatekeeper was always really fun and I don't blame Element at all for the parts breaking on it that it did. It was just a little pricey to keep falling off of cliffs and keep repairing it. So I just went ahead and decided, you know what, I'm gonna take the parts that I have sitting on the shelf and turn them into a car again. That right there is Tyson's entrance to this. So big shout out to Tyson for proving that this whole line was possible. So the electronics in this truck are actually a lot of Spectrum. Uh, I did a Spectrum censored brushless motor and ESC, which have the field, field oriented control or FOC, just like the AX systems. Now I did finally realize why Spectrum uh, charges more for their AX style system than Hobbywing does. And that's because if you have the right Spectrum controller, you can change your ESC settings directly from your controller, which is pretty cool. You can do it out there on the trail without a programming card or anything. So that's why it costs a little bit more. It's because they had to put in the time to make that work and program it. 
So if you're a big Spectrum guy, check out the Spectrum Firm Up Sensored Brushless Combo. Always one of my favorite parts of the trail is where you got to make the turn and commit to the big downhill and then try and land right on the rock where you want. Especially with it being this slick and cold today. It might get a little tricky, but we put our tire right where we needed it, just like usual. Go ahead and move the rear steer onto there and then slime our way to the bottom. Now it felt like I had shown this trail more than I actually had. I went back on my timeline and looked at how many videos I actually have of Mousetrap and there's not that many. So bringing the capper back here for the introduction back to you guys felt like the right thing to do. It was one of my original videos that I ever put up on my West Desert Wheeler channel back before I had a microphone and the audio was horrible. But uh, yeah, it's been a fun adventure so far. So thank you to everyone who subscribed so far. I'm still just feeling like I'm trying to grow the channel as much as possible and I don't think that feeling is ever really going to go away. So with the rear wheel steer and with the width of this truck, it really just makes this obstacle so much easier than something like my competition crawler because a narrower truck falls deeper into this canyon and can really make things challenging. So I just need to wiggle the front steering just a little bit. There we go. And then the front basically is going to be what holds the rears up and helps it drag through here as we move along. Rear is going to fall its deepest point right there and then just aim your tires to bring it right back up along the rocks. Just wiggling the servos just a little bit under some drive pressure. And that's it. Nice and easy there. Now I've driven this a lot of times compared to when I first did the video, so nailing the line is definitely a lot easier than it used to be. In fact, I used to think it wasn't possible without dig at a minimum. But I've been able to get my fully locked four-wheel drive competition crawler through there, which takes quite a few reverses and some work to get it to come up that ledge. And then here's the exit of my favorite obstacle, basically in all of Sand Hollow right up and out oh almost lost the rears brought them right around get the turn out and we're out of there now this spectrum system is a 2100 kv system and it's censored so it crawls awesome but you know what this thing also has some wheel speed this is one of my fastest trucks right now so let's see if we can shoot it up the hill here wheel speed is your friend on this one Normally I would give up and just push this up to the top, but it's so close. I think I just need to get the line right. Come on, Capra, we can do it. All right, perfect. We nailed it. A little rough, took a few tries, rolled over five or six times, but here we are on our way out the top. Mousetrap always providing the challenges, even for cars like this. Yeah, I decided to do a new paint scheme on the car. The original one was yellow and silver. Got quite a few videos with that set up if you guys want to see it. But now we've got the army green and black. Pretty fun. Had some help from my brother painting that one up while he was in town. But I think the car looks great. Here you go, getting it in the sun. You can really see the green pop. The roof is mostly black with a green stripe on the front. And then of course we've got the uh, sponsors down the side. Sky RC, smart technology from Spectrum, as well as Axial and Proline. So, car's looking good. Now this spot has always been the hardest with wider cars. Something like a stock SCX-10 2 cruises through here. Where uh, you can really get bound up pretty easy with something as wide as this car. This is a Capra on 2.2s with wheel spacers. So. It's a wide setup. So let's see if we can just kind of scrub our way along here.
It's a buggy thing. Real close. Come on, Capra. Yeah, we got it in and out of there. And that is the end of the mouse trap trail, guys. Didn't even use dig once, so. There we go. We'll go ahead and lock it in for this last drop. Some of the rocks have uh, become unstacked from people actually rock crawling on the real trail. So we'll use dig, help it set down, and then release it and let her go. And then she's out. Well, all right, guys, I'm excited that the capper is back. I hope that you are as well. There will be affiliate links down below where you can pick up all the parts on this capra and build one just like it. They are affiliate links. They will help me out if you buy anything through them. I would greatly appreciate it. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Pick up some West Desert Wheeler merch while you're at it. There's a link down below. We will see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.